वेलकम टू यूरेका आई एम गौहर रजा एंड यू आर वॉचिंग अ साइंस प्रोग्राम यूरेका इन दिस प्रोग्राम वी इंट्रोड्यूस एन आउटस्टैंडिंग साइंटिस्ट हु हैज अचीव्ड अ लॉट फॉर द कंट्री फॉर द एरिया ऑफ साइंस दैट ही हैज बीन वर्किंग इन एंड आल्सो हैज कंट्रीब्यूटेड टू द पूल ऑफ इंटरनेशनल साइंटिफिक नॉलेज लेट मी बिगिन बाय टेलिंग अ स्टोरी दैट वाज अ फैमिली द फादर वर्कड इन रेलवेज India itself was grappling with utter poverty and this family was at the lower end of the pyramid four children and it was difficult to spend life spend money on education was a problem the eldest son used to go to the school the school was about 12 kilometers away from the house the boy got up in the morning went to fetch maybe a liter of milk came back it was a crowded messy area where they lived 4:30 in the morning have a cup of coffee and then study for some time by the time sun rose there was so much of chaos that the boy couldn't study welcome dr shrikant my pleasure yoreka my pleasure this journey started as a very difficult journey and for quite some time it continued as a difficult journey how do you look back at your life although it was a difficult journey it was an enjoyable journey because what i did not get by means of finances i got through societal support through value systems and uh, i was not alone in this journey there were very many people in this journey yeah fact, the chaos that you experienced in, in your childhood you write somewhere that it was fun as well yes. you had lots of friends it was lots of fun and uh, uh, just that the journey uh, i shared it with very many people including my own brothers and sisters and the many of the other children who were around and all of us were in the same boat and for all of us uh, at that point of time uh, education would mean the difference between between what we were then to what we were looking at and what we were aspiring to become in terms of quality of life Of course, your father was not living with you. Then, who did guide you as far as education is concerned? Do you remember some? Yeah, some although my father teachers? was not living with me, he would send letters uh, almost uh, every two months, and in his letters, he would always have some problem of science, some problem of mathematics uh, that he would arouse you with, and uh, these uh, were uh, things that would guide me. and that apart in the school we had outstanding teachers very passionate teachers and they were i hope once again the teachers are listening that they can shape a person into a scientist even if the school is a government school that's where you went yes i uh, in fact if what i am today uh, i would uh, almost entirely dedicated to my teachers in that government school uh who were selfless uh, who were passionate who were extremely committed once again i would say that in the earlier days at least during my schooling days the teachers were there not because not for earning money or not to practice a profession they were there to inspire children they believed in that today most people most teachers are there to to make a living there's a lot of difference between making a living and uh, teaching being an inspiration inspiring the younger generation to build the country yes. eventually uh, do you remember some teacher yes i remember Who several teachers influenced in fact you a lot uh, one uh, vn raghavacharya uh, these were schools which had a, a brahmin domination and uh, uh, these teachers would not have half their head would be shaved on the back of the head they would uh, tie their hair Uh, we and many of them were like that but they were very erudite and very passionate teachers this teacher v n raghavacharya used to teach us history and geography then there was is he alive i do not know 
uh, maybe he is listening um, i don't know he must be very old if he were alive and there was this d ramanujam who was the principal outstanding teacher in mathematics then there was a teacher in science uh, i think his name was np sarathi and they turn your interest towards mathematics and science eventually and you did very well as far as high school is concerned yes when you passed your 10th standard yes. so you give credit to these teachers i would absolutely owe it to and them and then you took off but there were hitches <laughs> there were we'll come back to hitches uh, i have to take a break at the moment don't go anywhere we are coming back Welcome back to Eureka. We are discussing with Dr. Um, Srikant, who is director of NML, his life story. Now, this life story for me was very interesting when I came to know about you, that you did very well in 10th standard and then when you came to pre-university, which was 11th class in those days, then it was you… It was 12th class. It was 12th class? Okay. so you had not very inspiring uh, friends around you and your studies dipped and suddenly you realized that now it's enough i have to study uh, when did this realization came the realization came when i did and why? That, uh, the realization came when my entire family my father had uh, pinned my hopes on me as the eldest son to qualify for uh, engineering uh, in the state get a s- engineering seat within the state and also get the scholarships to support myself for the engineering education and um, uh, being from the forward community uh, i could not make it in the uh, to the engineering in the state and that was a big setback for personally for me and it left my father distraught and that's when uh, the the determination were you me. scolded and were you told that they are pinning hope on you as you are saying and uh, mm, your your sisters uh, and your uh, your brother uh, uh, they were not being encouraged so much to go for higher studies and that uh, was no. the the motivating factor for you eventually no they didn't scold me but uh, silence was uh, more killing uh, and uh, from the silence and from i could make out that uh, i have let them down and uh, that's when uh, i had made up my mind that uh, I'll stay back a year uh, luckily you got exams. into engineering uh, college i got into that was sheer luck yeah, as you put it the engineering college rorkela uh, had a late call right. and uh, they had called but then it was no holds bar you did i don't think the after best. that i look back as far as academics is concerned and you also went abroad for the studies for some time uh, uh, i but, went to abroad but you much didn't later. want to go and serve any other country but india i didn't want to in fact uh, uh, there was this dilemma after my masters of engineering from the institute of science Uh, whether to go abroad for my PhD or to whether to continue back in India for PhD, and uh, I just did not have the aptitude or the ambition to go abroad. Possibly partly driven by my parents' own advice and my own lack of uh, uh, ambition for going abroad. But yes, I, I, I remained. I still in my mind, if things motivate me, I think nationalism motivates me very strongly. Um. now let me let me switch over to uh, history of metallurgy in india it goes back to antiquity yes, about it one it goes and back to indus valley f- uh, indus valley civilization and later on it continued to develop over a period of time till british came after british came to india the metallurgy got a beating and then yes. uh, there was some problem but then again second world war and uh the roots were cut and britishers at the last leg of their stay in india had to develop institutions and one of them was uh nml national metallurgical laboratory dr bhaba was picking up people and uh, balraj vadhavan eventually becomes the first director balraj vadhavan balraj vidya he was in the first director he was in first director but indian as he was as the first indian first director. indian director 
Now, his name is a big name as far as metallurgy is concerned in India. The first rate technologist, first rate scientist. When you sat in that chair for the first time in which Dr. Balraj had sat, how did you feel? It was indeed a great <laughs> feeling. It was not only Balraj Nijavan, it is also the Alla. three foreign directors who yes. were prior to that were giants in the field and of galaxy. metallurgy and uh, that chair was occupied by a galaxy of stars. It was uh, very humbling for me, it was, uh, it was a very different feeling for me and uh, I only wish that I live up to the expectations and the standards that my predecessors have set uh, sitting in that chair. How are you trying country. to achieve those targets? which you have set for yourself and for your institute? We are trying to take the, the development of science to the stakeholder through, or through a variety of projects. Um, there are two aspects to research. There, are, there is this fundamental research and then realizing the value out of that through the development of a technology, you Correct. need to go a very long distance from fundamental research. That. And that is the mandate of Council of Scientific and Industrial yes, Research. Yes, that is the mandate. That you and start from fundamental, go to basic research, go to applied research and then technological development. Yes, and we go, we are trying to go all the way from the basic research to technology development through various stages, which includes technology development at pilot scale, then at semi-commercial scale and then up to the market. And for this purpose, we are trying to ensure that uh, to maximize the chances of the technology reaching the market, we are trying to have partners who would either a manufacturer or the user being associated with this technology development right from the beginning. Could and you in give that me an respect, example of that? Yeah, uh, there are very many examples. Uh, for example, for the past three years or four years or so, we have had very extensive interactions with Tata Steel. Today, at least uh, five of our major technology development efforts of the five technology, major technology development efforts, three of them we have associated Tata as partner. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, which is uh, we are awaiting a sanction from the Ministry of Steel, is the development of the so-called cold roll grain oriented steel, which the country does not produce. And to have what a pilot so, so, so wonderful about it? Because uh, our uh, viewers this, may not be knowing what this, is this cold roll uh, grain oriented steel. This yeah. is a steel which is used in the transformer course. Yeah. and which will minimize the power loss. Uh, today, if you look at the power generation of the country, I think close to 200,000 megawatts or so. Right. Um, and uh, for 200,000 megawatts of power distribution, you can imagine the number of transformers and the amount of this steel that is being consumed. And if you save even 1% of energy there, it's a, it's a huge, huge impact saving. on the economy. Right. So, that's uh, one of the major projects that we are doing. Here, of course, there are other partners. We have Tata Steel as a partner. We have uh, Rashtriya Ispat Nigam Limited as a partner, Ministry of Steel as a partner, and CSIR as a partner. You have also developed uh, technologies for developing countries. Would you like to say something Pardon about me? that? Develop for developing countries, other developing countries which are our neighbors and distant. Would you like to say something about it? Uh, we have been having a lot of foreign collaborations. Uh, uh, through two means. One is through transfers of already developed technologies, which we have done. For example, one of the technologies that we have recently transferred to Turkey, to a company in Turkey, right. is the extraction of uh, lead from uh, the waste zinc ash. Right. And lead is an uh, environmental hazard. And uh, today, uh, lead containing waste cannot be, cannot be produced as disposed of or used as a landfill. And we've developed a technology where we extract the lead, the small amounts of lead, we extract the lead and make it a zero discharge process. And this technology was transferred to Turkey. So, uh, if I understand correctly that you are doing, the waste is being processed and then lead is extracted from it and the waste can then be maybe landfilled or uh, mixed with water. Can be or also used for as a construction material. As a construction material. Uh, like uh, fly ash, etc., are yes. being used. And because lead is highly carcinogenic and therefore it should not be mixed anywhere with the soil okay. or water. Yes. So that is the process that you have developed for the turkey. Yeah. Similarly, you are we training a lot of children from, from uh, Korea. Uh, Korea. 
Yes, we have a very strong interaction with Korea over the past five years with the Korea Institute of Geosciences and Mineral Resources as well as with Korea Maritime University. We have collaboration with them on two fronts. One on technology development for electronic waste for the extraction of various metals as well as the polymers, separation of the polymers and extraction of various metals including copper, nickel, gold, silver and so Korea on. is supposed to be ahead of us in most technologies and yet we are giving them training. You make us proud. I have to take a break. Don't go anywhere. The debate is heating up. Welcome back to Eureka. We are discussing with Dr. Srikant, who is director of National Metallurgical Laboratory. Why should a poor country like India support this kind of research, which requires huge amount of money? A collaborative research? With no, the generally an institute like this. This question, our public has to, has a right to ask. Yes. Right. I think we should be defending our institutions before public because it is a common citizen in the country who pays for what we do. So why should there be an institution like I am glad National? you asked me this question. There are at least four reasons why the public should support. Uh, first and foremost, these are the laboratories which have been equipped for the development of technologies, for translating knowledge into a product or a process that will tomorrow give you a competitive edge internationally. That's the first reason for technology development. The second reason is the infrastructure that has been created in many of these laboratories today serves not only the requirements and needs of the scientists of these laboratories, but to the entire industrial and student community of the country. Third, it supports education in a very, very large way, whether it be through the fellowships which are availed in the laboratories or by its own program of the Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research. You, you call it at any point of time in any of the CSAR laboratories, I am sure there are something like 40 to 50 students at least who are spending their time there, either doing their PhD or registered within CSIR or maybe in some other university. And fourth, these are uh, show, uh, sh showcases of the country for science and technology in the world. So, uh, these, for precisely these four reasons, I think... May I add one, that if you are doing good science in your country, then others are ready to help you. If you are not doing good science, then they are not neither able to give you knowledge and never will give you the technology. So today, you are able to interact with and teach, in fact, Korean students is because in Korean. the country you have this repository of knowledge, knowledge and trained manpower. I would like to ask you one more question, which is again personal. Your father sacrificed a lot for giving you education. But if you look at your own life, you sacrificed a lot for doing research. Your father lived away from the family to give you education. You have been living away from the family uh, almost for many, many years to do good science. It's and you been call yourself as accidental engineer, accidental scientist and accidental director. Would you like to talk about it? Yes, it's been difficult. It's a personal thing if you don't talk to, don't no, want to I, talk I, about I'm it. I am comfortable speaking about that. Uh, it has been difficult because it is not always easy uh, making this. It's one thing speaking about it and it's another thing experiencing it. It's been difficult, but uh, it, it happens because of circumstances. And uh, circumstances is what pushed my father to what he had to sacrifice and circumstances is what has pushed me to what I have to be today. But having done that, this should be worth the sacrifice that you've made. For example, if at the end of the day, uh, the sacrifices does not result in a tangible benefit to the, in at least an incremental way to the people of the country, then uh, uh, this entire uh, so-called sacrifice goes in vain. 
And so that's has it gone in vain? I do not or know. It is satisfied. for the stakeholders Whatever to judge at the end of the day whether it has made a difference. But personally, uh, I myself uh, uh, am not content with uh, with uh, what I have achieved. Uh, the good aspect is that there is still some more time to go. Uh, I feel that uh, uh, it's not that one thing which I have done or which as an institution we have done has changed the life of a common man in the country. Uh, and I wish that in the remaining time that I have, uh, I am able to do this thing which would make a significant difference uh, to the life of a common no, man. But your in institute has definitely made a difference right from uh, the, the uh, armament technology to uh, something very simple, making tiles out of out of fly ashes. Yeah, NML has so contributed great technologies. It is uh, to, to list a few. In the early 60s, we had contributed uh, to modern, the so-called alternate iron making processes uh, using what is known as a low shaft furnace instead of a blast furnace. We were the inventors of the rotary kiln, direct reduction iron technology. We were the uh, technology developers for magnesium production in the country and the only commercial plant for magnesium production was uh, uh, from NML. We were pioneers in mineral beneficiation technologies. We were pioneers in ferroalloy technologies. Uh, we were pioneers in development of new steels which included nickel free stainless steel um, and the whole range of technologies. But if you look at uh, the scenario today, uh, the technologies that exist in the market and how many of them are attributed to uh, National Metallurgical Laboratory. Despite the fact that most of what I said, uh, the technology came from the National Metallurgical Laboratory, but in terms of the recognition that the country attaches to most of these technologies, it's, it's not there. Uh, this situation needs to be changed. This situation needs to be changed because technologists and also scientists have not really communicated to people. They have not taken uh, the, the uh, first step towards recognition. Uh, recognition doesn't come easy, Re recognition doesn't come cheap, one has to make an effort. Uh, I think that our scientists also are very introvert and they do not really reach out to people and say that we have done this much for you, you paid us this much. Anyway, uh, let me go uh, over to another question that when you make a difference, then you feel happy and satisfied. But when you make a scientific contribution, then it is Eureka. What was the moment in your life which you will call as Eureka? Or there were many moments? Mm, uh, there were many moments and you have to scale it with time. Because when you are doing your PhDs, uh, a publication, a new idea going into a publication becomes a Eureka and you feel happy. But as you progress down the line, uh, you have publications, you are now looking for much larger things which would make you feel a Eureka. Uh, there are Can you recollect one uh, moment? Uh, in my PhD Which career, yes, cherish? when I had my first publication, it was largely mathematical and it was completely a new method of uh, analyzing a subject. It was Eureka for that me. That was Eureka for you. Yeah. And you were young at that time. I was young at that time so and I was very happy with it. Uh, you have been recognized, your contribution personally has been recognized by the country, by also scientists around you. Uh, which award do, did you cherish the best? Was it Young Scientist Award? Uh, yes, I would say that it is the Young Scientist Award which you, you cherish because it comes at an age uh, which uh, at which you are actually those those recognitions make a difference to you uh, and inspires you. Yes, I would say that uh, the when Young you Scientist Award. When you were going to the stage to receive the award, were your legs shaking as a? As a <laughs> I don't recall whether my legs were shaking, <laughs> but my heart was surely pumping more. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to give uh, some message to the younger generation of the country? Uh, yes, uh, I would like the younger generation of today to pursue their passion, firstly. Uh, in our times, that opportunity was not that to pursue what you wish to pursue as a passion. Today, you have that opportunity. And the second, I, I love this when I read about Steve Jobs' career, he said that uh, uh, be foolish, be hungry. Uh, what he meant was that uh, be curious at all times 
and be self motivated be hungry at all times i think it is very important that uh, that you stay curious that you self motivate yourself and pursue your passion your yeah, hunger for knowledge and curiosity has been the driving force behind dr shrikant's long journey in a short period of time we will come back next week with another as outstanding personality as dr shrikant is it has been wonderful to be with you thank you dr raza <laughs>